so I gather. So there's been a marked deterioration over that period. And I'd just like your thoughts, because it is used as a default position for our stormwater, whether it's running off the roads or off private properties, into that. And so therefore, it's a cumulative effect over time. And so we have on one hand the incidents like a, a shared contamination, we have this cumulative thing where council doesn't seem to be accepting any responsibility for, for continuing to put stormwater um, into, into the lake. Any thoughts? Uh, well, I'm no expert on the water quality of Lake Pipoki, but it would appear that there is a major weed issue. And um, uh, I, I also, I've also gathered from communications from various people that nobody seems to know who's responsible for Lake Pipoki. So that needs to be sorted out pretty quickly. You're absolutely right. Unfortunately, the existing management plan refers to the Auckland Regional Council. So there is some work that needs to be worked out in that regard. And then obviously the lake bed is owned by the Department of Conservation, which is an interesting situation as well. So um, thank you very much, uh, Richard. I've also um, so I've chucked in a separate B and C members. Um, so recognising the work that Forest and Bird has done in maintaining um, the noxious weeds, uh, well, not maintaining, eradicating the noxious weeds um, in our board area, as well as the work that you've done um, on Lake Pukki. Um, I'm happy to second the... Very good. So it's moved myself, seconded member... Oh, actually, sorry, yes. Um, Grant, would you like to second it? No, but... Uh, OK, very good. Very cordial. Um, so moved um, myself, seconded by Member Cohen. All those in favour? I contrary. Thank you. Thank you very much, Richard. Um, and that brings us on to uh, Nigel Ellis from the Waitamata District Health Board. Very good. Off the back of that, whenever you're ready. <laughs> Thank you. So, uh, Mr Chairman, ladies and gentlemen of the board, um, firstly I'd like to uh, express uh, the deep regret uh, from the Waitamata District Health Board uh, for the release of diesel onto the lake um, and uh, we sincerely apologise for the impact that it's had on the lake and on the community uh, and also uh, the impact on wildlife. Uh, which has been very unfortunate. I think I'd also would also like to express our um, gratitude to the neighbours and community around the lake that have uh, shown us a lot of patience uh, and understanding during this time, and and, and also in some cases uh, their direct support, uh, especially in the support uh, the, the dealing with uh, injured or affected wildlife. Additionally, um, I'd like to no acknowledge the Auckland Council uh, for their leadership uh, in responding to uh, the uh, diesel on the lake. Uh, as you mentioned before, they, um, uh, they uh, have jurisdiction for uh, the contamination that was there and they led and advised us on our response, uh, as uh, did the Ports of Auckland, um, who were also very helpful. Additionally, DOC, Ambry Farm, Auckland Zoo, uh, assisted with, wild, uh, with uh, uh, cleaning of birds, capturing of birds, cleaning them, uh, and would also like to, uh, to thank them for that and uh, the members of the community that, uh, that contributed their time. I'd also like to uh, give you some background as to, as to what happened um, and uh, some detail as to uh, wh how we've responded and what we're doing going forward. So as Mr Hursthouse uh, mentioned before, uh, we were first notified of the event on Thursday the, uh, the 23rd of June in the morning at 8.30 uh, and notification came through the council that uh, diesel had been uh, seen on the lake. Uh, we immediately uh, took action to locate the source of uh, the spill, uh, which in, case, in this case was uh, identified as uh, an overflow from one of our storage tanks. Um, we isolated uh, the cause of the, uh, the overflow, dropped the, uh, blocked the drains, uh, and uh, got sucker trucks in to start to clean the stormwater systems. Uh, all during this time, it was an extreme weather period, uh, and I think you may recall that it, I think it's been uh, noted as being um, the heaviest uh, rain in a short period of time in June uh, in, in recent history. So uh, the conditions were against us um, and uh, it did make it more difficult to respond uh, and to contain the, uh, the diesel that was already in the pipework. 
Uh, we have a filter system that uh, filters hydrocarbons out of the stormwater before it enters the lake. And that, storm, that uh, filter system uh, was overwhelmed at times by the flow of water uh, due to the heavy rain conditions. Um, I'd like to make it clear that the rain was not the cause of the diesel spill, but it exacerbated the amount of diesel that entered the lake uh, due to it uh, uh, overwhelming the filters. Our immediate actions on the day, as I said, were to isolate and contain uh, any diesel that uh, was released and then to minimise uh, the flow of that into the lake using sucker trucks to contain and capture any, any stormwater that we could and any, any diesel. We also then uh, worked to um, implement booms at the outlets and later on also further down the lake uh, and uh, to activate uh, so, uh, recovery effort for wildlife that was affected. And we did that um, by contacting uh, council agencies uh, to get that underway. Following then, uh, our focus was on minimising the impact, uh, which included cleaning up the shoreline uh, from uh, the DHB uh, down beyond the rowing club, um, harvesting affected weeds and grass on the edge to, to get any, um, uh, do our best to remove any diesel that we could, um, to clean the drains and stormwater pipes, um, and as you'll appreciate, if diesel is spilt, it does cling to surfaces, and uh, there was a continuing uh, if you want leach that was able to be uh, visually seen on the lake uh, coming off the stormwater pipes. So uh, one thing we can say is, we, is categorically the, uh, the release of diesel was stopped on the Thursday immediately we found it, uh, but uh, because of uh, what I mentioned just previous, uh, there was a continuous, oh, sorry, a continuation of the visual effect on that on the lake. We uh, at all times have uh, tried to be open uh, with the council, which, sorry, we have been open with the council um, and uh, have uh, had a, uh, a policy of full disclosure to them. We've answered any queries that we've had uh, and we've had an open in invitation to escort visitors onto the site. One of the uh, key things that steps we had to take was to protect the public. Uh, we have uh, an, a number of building sites um, or large projects underway in the area. Um, including directly uh, beside the, the outlet. Uh, that included um, a number of hazards uh, that we had to protect the public from, uh, including the school children that passed uh, across that area. Sorry, Ms. Ellis, I'm just very aware that there are some questions that want to be asked as well. So if I could just get you to quickly wrap up and sure. perhaps just emphasise on, on what's being done to prevent this happening again. Okay, so going forward, we uh, have engaged uh, consultants uh, to review our diesel management practices, and uh, our aim is to uh, apply best practice and their, uh, with their help we'll identify any areas where we can improve. We've already taken the steps of isolating any, uh, uh, any further um, diesel release by uh, isolating equipment and uh, enhancing the containment systems we have. Our filters have been replaced and we have an ongoing maintenance program to monitor them. So in, in closing again, we'd like to uh, express our uh, apology to the community um, and to this board for, for the event and uh, the impact it's had. Thank you. So I've got um, Member Gillen and then I've got Member Hale and then Member Cohen. Great. Um, look, thanks for coming along and explaining to the board and to the public. I think that's important. Um, and in the same way as Richard's come and informed the board as well, and it's, it's very useful. You might be aware I've got a notice of motion um, on the table, and the purpose of that is to um, educate us and council and to guide us in the best way forward. We can only, if it's passed, of course, I'm, I'm assuming something there, <laughs> it's successful, but if it's, if it's passed, I hope it will do, we can only ask our officers um, for a report, um, but I'd invite the WDHB to have input into that report as well as possible, and that would be gratefully received. Excellent, thank you. Member Hale. Thank you, and thank you for coming along and, and um, exposing what the Health Board has done. Um, so the spill, where, where was it discovered that the spill actually came from? Was it a fault in the holding tank, or was it something that just, you know, filters that didn't turn off, or...? 
where was it actually discovered? So it, it's uh, not a fault in the holding tank. It's a double skin tank. It's in good condition. Um, that was not the cause. Um, it was a fuel processing system uh, that has malfunctioned um, and caused uh, the release of, this, of the diesel. Okay. And then, it, it then obviously it's spilled into and got into some of the stormwater drains, has it, that then go into the lake. That's so absolutely that's, correct. That's where it's, it's spilled on for. Thank you. Member Cohen. Yeah, just, um, two questions. One is obviously the first time that's happened that of some note. Um, do you actually have the equipment to curtail or stop something like this on, on site, or is it one that you have to go to contractors for them to get and then you've got the time delays? Mm. Uh, the answer is, is yes to both. Uh, we have some equipment um, and we also employed, uh, due to the size of this uh, event, uh, uh, professional assistance to help us with that. So what, d what would you expect the time delays from that just moving forward and whether when you're looking at good practice going forward, is there a way of shortening that time period? Um, there no doubt will be ways to improve um, uh, performance and that's part of uh, the investigation that we'll be undertaking is, uh, is, is to look at ways that we can do better uh, and that would be also including how uh, we can get faster response from third parties to assist. Okay. And my, my other question is that you said that um, you cooperated and worked in well with council. Who was actually responsible to be engaging with the community and particularly uh, neighbours or people abutting onto the lake? We each have dif different jurisdictions uh, at play there. So uh, from the perspective of um, communicating about the spill to uh, the community, we did that through letter drops ourselves. Um, and in terms of the quality of water on the and uh, the ability to use the lake, uh, that uh, we see as councils. Okay. And, and you did hear Mr Hershouse comment in regards to the letter drop may not have been, um, you may not have had all the information at that particular time when you did the first letter drop. There seems some suggestion that it was a bit confused as to what the real reasons were. I'm sorry to hear that, uh, that uh, we didn't uh, provide all the information that he uh, would have liked to have seen at that time. Um, as these incidents happen, you do learn more as you go, and it has taken us some time to understand the cause of the uh, um, of the fault, that, uh, and that has been a, the result of an engineering investigation. And just to finish up, Mr. Chair, um, obviously there can be more of a problem if it's say like a weekend or a long weekend or, or something like that. We even find. Uh, top management or, or somebody to be dealing with it? Is, is that an issue that you'll also be addressing? We have incident management plans that include call-out uh, and we have people that are assigned to, uh, to be able to respond. Um, obviously, uh, during the weekends, people are less available than during the week. So I take your point. You. Okay, so um, I'll move receipt of um, Mr. Ellis's uh, presentation on behalf of the White Matter DHB or White Matter DHB. Um, it's seconded by Member Rowe. All those in favour? Contrary, carried. Thank you very much. Um, so that just brings us to our final presenter, also on the Lake Bookie issue. Um, that's Francis Moxie. Mr. Moxie. Class is on. <coughs> I've come really to uh, discuss the uh, the uh, Lake Bipoki Management Plan. Um, I've been a resident of, uh, of the lakeside for approximately 38 years. As a background, um, over the years, over summer when the lake level drops, weed tends to accumulate and rot, resulting in bird life affected by botulism. And this has happened over, a, over many years, going back 20 or 30 years. We rescued water birds and, uh, and either looked after them ourselves until they were able to be released back into the lake or taken them to Sylvia at Bird Rescue Rock Bay Bay. During the last summer, the, last, the lake weed was the worst we have, have seen since living on the lake edge. At times, the lake weed was 30 centimetres thick and spread out many metres from the shoreline. We alone rescued two ducks and one swan and again took these to Bird Rescue at Rock Bay. 
couple of years ago, I would rake the weed out of the lake and compost it myself. However, over the last few years, with the longer, warmer summers, the lake weed problem has worsened. This summer, our neighbourhood was willing to assist Auckland Council with the removal of lake weed. Unfortunately, Auckland Council indicated they could not accept the assistance of lakeside residents due to health and safety concerns. At the end of, the, at the end of summer, Auckland Council did finally organise a limited operation to remove some lake weed.